Hello everyone. I am 27F. My husband and I found out two months ago we are expecting our first child. Last week, we officially announced it via text and phone calls to our friends and family. The next day at work, I found out that one of my coworkers had taken the photo of the sonogram I had sent them in the group text, someone had asked to see it and posted it on her social media to fool her ex-boyfriend, who she broke up with a few weeks ago, into thinking she was pregnant. I never wanted my sonogram on the internet, I don't have a Facebook or an Instagram or anything like that, and I feel extremely uncomfortable that it's out there without me being able to control the audience of who is looking at it. Also, this seems like an extremely cruel trick to play on someone, and she used my sonogram as a prop for this mean joke. When I expressed that I was upset to my coworker, she said I was being dramatic and I was just looking for something to be upset over. She said she covered up all identifying information and that it was only up for a few hours, and she told her ex-boyfriend the truth after making him sweat for a bit. Are pregnancy hormones making me more upset about this than I should be? Am I the idiot? Absolutely not the idiot. What in the world was she thinking? This is a huge invasion of your privacy. I mean, I'm not even touching the can of worms of the prank she played on her BF, because holy hell. I'm just focusing on your involvement here. To be completely honest, I'd go to HR about this. But you do you. It's absolutely unacceptable behavior. And, frankly, I think it's time to not be on a group chat with her. This is not someone you need to have access to your life outside professional boundaries. She took an extremely beautiful, wonderful moment of your life and twisted it for her own sick pleasure. Yes. A visit to HR is totally warranted and I would definitely keep things strictly professional with her from now on. I'm seeing multiple reasons to never interact with her if you don't have to. Most definitely involve HR. Also, in the future, as if you don't already know, keep your cards close to your chest. Not the idiot, in addition to being a pretty sick joke, that's completely out of line to post someone else's sonogram. I feel bad for her boyfriend. What kind of relationship is built on the foundation of making your SO sweat for a bit? Jesus Christ. Well, he's probably an ex for a reason. Not the idiot, you did not post your child's pic on the net. It was a horrible joke to play. All you have is her word she took it down. It might still be up. Even if she did take it down, it's possible someone else screenshot it along with her message to show someone else how horrible the co-worker treated the ex. Personally, I would get someone to check her webpage to make sure the post was taken down. They contact the ex and explain what happened and that you would like the picture deleted if any of his friends screenshot the pic. Honestly, if she has done something like this in the past, stalking him, he might be trying to get evidence to get a restraining order against her. And there would be your baby's first picture in a police report. Also, never share any pics of your child again with her. Show them to her, but not via the net. On another note congrats. May your baby always sleep through the night and rarely cry. Thank you. I've always hated my name because it's really uncommon and my teachers and even some of my friends pronounce it incorrectly, even after several corrections. I eventually got sick of it and researched legal name changes and the procedures and decided to save up for a name change after asking my mum and dad, to which they answered yes. Last week I told my parents that I'd saved up $300 from chores and my birthday money. I told them that it was more than enough for the name change with the post, handling, etc., and they told me how proud they were about me being able to handle money like that. Beginning of this week, I gathered up almost all the IDs that I needed and put them in a folder. I couldn't find the envelope with my money so I started asking my parents and they told me they hadn't seen it. I looked all around the house and couldn't find the money. The entire time, my parents just sat there watching me and didn't help look for it when I asked. In the end, I just gave up and thought it would turn up some time or another. This morning my parents took me aside and told me that they needed to tell me something. They said that we'd be going to a ski resort, caravan park, in a few weeks time and that they'd used my money to pay for some of it because. We all need to do our bit because we're a bit tight on money right now. I was furious. I started shouting at them for taking my savings without telling me and using them for something that we didn't even need. They argued that I'm an ungrateful idiot for wanting to change the name that they'd chosen for their little girl and that I'd grown up with it and never complained until now. I left the room and took a walk, during which my parents proceeded to text all our relatives and friends about the incident. 
I came back to find my phone blowing up with 200 plus messages from my aunts and uncles, telling me I should apologize for being so petty and thankless. I have no idea what to do and I haven't talked to my parents since then. So, am I the idiot? Not the idiot. If money is so tight they have to steal from their kid, they should not be going to a ski resort. People like this make me sick. Not the idiot. The issue isn't your name, they knew about that already, so that doesn't excuse them, the issue here is stealing your money. At the end of the day, that's your savings, and taking it for anything you're not okay with is just wrong. Not the idiot. You can eventually change your name, but they will not change the fact that they deserve your mistrust. Keep saving and don't tell them, it might take longer than you wanted, but you will get there. They can also go alone to ski, I doubt it's something you would enjoy being reminded that they made you pay for it when you didn't want it. I can imagine how creative your parents feel choosing your name, but probably not as creative as Elon Musk, maybe you can start requesting people to address you by your chosen name as a nickname for the time being. Update. Wow I didn't expect this to blow up, but today I asked my parents about cancelling the trip or at least paying me back, and they told me they'd pay me back with gift cards. I thought I'll take what I can get and apologized for shouting at them yesterday. I've decided to save up again but be much more cautious with my money, and I definitely don't trust them anymore. I meal prep my husband's breakfasts and lunches in those little black plastic, compartmented containers. An ongoing argument is that he leaves the sealed containers at work. He's a mechanic in a shop. For several days, bringing home a stack of 10 hot, sealed, dirty containers that he piles on the counter or in the sink. I have asked him to bring them home every day, but he forgets. I ask him to rinse them out at work. He forgets can't want. I ask him to please take the lids off so the reek doesn't just keep getting worse. He cracks the lids open kinda on a few. There's juice or bits of food baking in the heat from everything like eggs and sausage to ground beef to mashed potatoes. It's gag a maggot level when you open them, to the point there's pressure building in the containers, so you get whooshed in the face with hot garbage air. I told him to wash his own. That's how I wound up with 50 plus containers taking up every inch of my kitchen, because I don't have time to do dishes every day. If I have to wash dishes you just have to wait until Saturday. So, I told him, fine. I cook 100% of the meals in those containers. I make the list to buy the food and I deal with the shopping. I'm the only one washing them. So, if you can't use any of the options I gave you to keep them from rotting in a hot shop, I'm throwing them in the trash every time I find a sealed one. He evidently didn't believe me because last night when he took out the trash, most of the bag was full of containers, some with utensils still in them. He freaked out and said we can't afford to replace all of it, and I told him to remember that's what we tell our three-year-old about not scratching his movies, because he won't have movies if he ruins them. And the three-year-old learned. So, he's pissed that I threw away the containers, and he is eating steak and mashed potatoes with one of the toddler's mini forks out of the Ziploc bag today. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Your husband is being a jerk and a disrespectful one, at that. If he can't be bothered to at least rinse a container, then screw it. He can eat out of a disposable bag with a plastic fork. Not the idiot, you're doing all the work to buy and prepare his food. Also, rinsing them isn't that difficult at work, it's the least he can do. I would switch to glass though. Larger upfront investment but they last forever and you can put them in the dishwasher over and over. Not the idiot, your husband is acting like a child. Once or twice, fine mistakes happen. But 50 plus times. He's being gross and irresponsible. 15 months ago, my new wife told me she wanted a dog. I had been told by my stepchildren and her longtime friends that my wife has a long history of wanting a dog more than anything in the world, she has the worst case of ADHD I've ever seen in an adult, then finding a new home for the dog when she gets tired of it. After a long conversation, she assured me that wouldn't happen, so I explained how much I love dogs and that she couldn't make a dog part of my family and then take it away. She promised. Passed forward a few months and the newness wore off for her as my affection grew for our very small dog. He's not perfect, even after more than a year we can't get him to consistently poop outside, but he's such a happy, affectionate puppy. Without consulting me first, my wife spent $2,000 on a new dog, a whole other issue, last summer. As her interest in the new dog grew, her disdain for our first dog also grew. She wants to get rid of the first dog. 
I've told her she made him part of my family and I'm now a package deal that includes him, so he's going nowhere. She thinks I'm an idiot for not standing by her. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Pets are not toys, they're living beings with feelings like us. You can't discard them when they're inconvenient. Shaking my damn head. Not the idiot. Just to be clear though, that's not a function of her ADHD. She's just being her callous, cruel, authentic self. Not the idiot. But it sounds like you have some serious marriage issues going on here from what you've written. Update. Thank you all for the feedback and messages. I started off trying to respond to all comments, but there were just too many. My wife is clearly the idiot and I'm putting pieces in place to make her my ex-wife. She gave me her word, I gave her my trust, and she abused it. Update. Thank you all for the feedback and messages. I started off trying to respond to all comments, but there were just too many. My wife is clearly the idiot and I'm putting pieces in place to make her my ex-wife. She gave me her word, I gave her my trust, and she abused it. Her interest in the newer dog is starting to fade, so I'm sure when I leave, she owned the house before we met, I'll be taking both of them. Since she's impulse shopped us close to poverty, it's going to be a slow process getting funds together before I walk out the door. She's in therapy and takes a casserole of daily meds, although I'm certain she's a covert narcissist who misidentifies as an empath, no therapist can help her because she's delusional, and no man is ever going to find prolonged happiness with her. This is all crap I wish I'd have known before marrying her, but live and learn. I, 20F, live in a very safe city. One of the safest cities in the nation. Due to this and the lack of parental regulation as a kid, I never locked my doors. I drive a Wrangler and take the top and doors off and have never had a problem with stealing. I've never locked the doors to my houses or apartments. This has never been an issue with my old roommates or family. It's just the way I've developed. My roommate, 19F, since moving in, has increasingly become more paranoid and anxious. I've known her for years and have never seen her like this. She thinks there are cameras in her sink, if she gets a bug bite, she assumes she has bugs living in her bed, when she sleeps she has paralysis where someone comes in to kill her. She locks her bedroom door and front door for safety. Knowing this, I've tried to lock the door. However, I don't sometimes. It's a habit I'm trying to break. I came home a week ago, there was crap everywhere. It looked like a mini tornado whirled through my apartment. I went into my room and my TV was gone, my mini boba fridge was gone, all my vintage playboys were gone, and so much of my clothes vanished. It was clear, through my eyes, that I had been robbed. I sat on my bed and just sat there in shock. On the verge of tears, I called my father who didn't pick up and I was left defeated practically, lol. Then I jumped up because I was worried about my roommate's room. She was sitting there waiting for me. She had all my things in there pranked me to try and teach me a lesson about locking the door. My problem is that she never even talked to me, I had no idea this was an issue with her before. She said I should have assumed that I need to lock the door out of respect for a shared living space. After trivial arguing I went mute, grabbed all my stuff to put in my room, and I have completely ignored her since. I'm upset and not over it. I find her thought process alarming and delusional. A mutual friend says that I'm overreacting and being rude to her when she's going through a hard time. As much as I understand that she's having problems I have received zero empathy or question of my feelings. I don't think I'm an idiot, I think everybody's out of their minds and I need some time away from the crazies. Everyone is the idiot here. Lock the damn door. It does not matter how you were raised. The second you started living with others, the game changed. Everyone is the idiot here. You know how when someone gets killed or something horrible happens and you see that neighbor on TV who looks panicked and says, this kind of thing doesn't happen here. That's you. News flash. That kind of thing happens everywhere. Lock your door, especially in a roommate situation. That is not to excuse what your roommate did. I get the point she was trying to make, but the way she did it wasn't acceptable. Sounds like she may need help and you need a new roommate. Everyone is the idiot here. Yes, I agree that her trauma or mental illness, if she is diagnosed with any besides paranoia, is not your responsibility. But you need to understand that your way of living may not be reasonable to others. I also lived in one of the safest cities in my country, but still locked doors out of respect for living in a shared space with other people. Update. Oh boy. Look, I'm just naive. I honestly didn't know. 
Thank you to the people who understand that I wasn't trying to be malicious by forgetting to lock the door. Also, no my roommate is not insane, she's a close friend of mine, and we get along well in every other situation, we do most things together. That's my biggest confusion about this, as she has never had a problem with communication before. So, I am not finding another roommate lol. She's going to the doctor for her symptoms and help is on the way. Also, yes my instinct was to sit on my bed. When you enter that level of shock it's hard to think clearly. My perspective, at the moment, was that she was not home yet because her car wasn't there. I wasn't meaning to be selfish by being sad about my collections and not thinking about my potentially dead roommate. Update 2. I forgot to mention that yes, I have talked to her. She said that she thought I would think of it as a silly prank and laugh about it when I saw all my things. I didn't take it that way though. I talked to her and asked why she wouldn't just ask me one time to be more aware of locking the door every time, which I know shouldn't have been addressed, but that it would have been a necessary action before stealing all my things, ripping a few of my posters, making the house a mess, which, by the way, she made me clean up, as her way of telling me to do better. I apologized for my stupidity and naiveness. I don't believe in bad people, this has actually been a problem I've always had. Anyway, she apologized too and will be giving me some compensation to help pay for the damage she gave me in the process of this prank. I, 41M, am a single dad to my daughter, 14. Her mom couldn't care less about our daughter, so it's always been my daughter and I almost two years ago my daughter got diagnosed with cancer at first it was leukemia, but it eventually spread to her brain. Watching her go through this made me realize how strong and tough my girl is. On the 9th my daughter unexpectedly got admitted to the hospital. Her birthday was the next day, and she told me she wanted to wait until she got home to open presents and celebrate her birthday. So, she and I ended up eating cake and watching movies in her hospital room for her B-day. After that, her health declined pretty rapidly. A week later, the 17th, she passed away. I had all her presents ready in the recliner she always sits in for when she comes home. Well that never happened so they have been just sitting there. The family had also brought over gifts for her mostly simple things they knew she would like clothes, blankets, water bottles, etc. I got her an iPad as well as a few small things. This morning my mom, dad, and sister came over to my house for the first time since she passed. We were going to make a picture board and slideshow for her funeral. After we started working on both my sister noticed the presents and asked if my daughter ever opened them. I explained she wanted to wait until she got home to celebrate open presents. And I haven't felt right moving them yet. My sister and mom said we should just give them to my sister's twin daughters, who are turning 13 in about two weeks. I said I wouldn't feel comfortable knowing my nieces are using gifts meant for my daughter. And if I was to do anything with the gifts I would donate the ones I can to the children's hospital. My mom and sister argued that it's right to keep the gifts in the family, rather than going to complete strangers, and I'm just being a selfish idiot. Let me make myself perfectly clear. You are not going to make me feel bad about how I choose to grieve my daughter's death. If donating these things in her honor helps me, then that is what I am going to do. The fact that you would attempt to make me feel bad right now, like I would be a bad person for donating these things instead of gifting them to your daughters who are still on this earth with you, while mine is gone forever disgusts me. I can honestly say I have never been more disappointed in any human being than I am right now in the two of you. And frankly, I don't want to see or hear from either of you for a while. You both need to get the hell away from me before I say something I can never take back. Not the idiot. Not the idiot. OP, I am so sorry for your loss. You are allowed to grieve in whichever way you want, and the second you said you weren't comfortable with it, they should have listened to you. I, a stranger on the internet, can completely understand the feeling and pain you may experience seeing your nieces play with things that were your daughters, but that she never got the chance to even open. Your family is being incredibly selfish putting any kind of demand on her belongings within four days of her passing. I am biting my tongue and holding back language, but just know that a lot worse things could be said about them justly. Not the idiot, find a grief counselor or therapist to speak with. I know it's hard, but it does help. Your mother and sister being that interested in your daughter's things so soon after her death is just a bit sickening.